Hello and welcome back. I have played almost 15 games on patch 14.8 and I'm going to share with you my tier list of all the most broken mids that you can abuse for free LP. Uh, but to start off, let's uh, let's just go through the patch notes really quickly together. Uh, we've got a buff to Akali, 30 HP. I think Akali was already in a great spot, so this obviously um, makes her stronger, but doesn't really change the way that she lanes, right? It's not really um, something about her energy regen or cooldown, so she'll still be the same champion. Uh, we've got Azir nerfs because he's been uh, pro-jailed, as always. Um, not sure if Azir will still be worth playing in solo key. Obviously, if you're an Azir main, this doesn't really change the champion too much. The health regen, they've reduced his mana, reduced his health. It hasn't really changed the champion too much. And this will definitely be something that you can feel um, from pushing the wave. You might need an extra auto or two on the front and the back wave. But in general, it's not, not a huge uh, deal. Briar nerf for the... 75th time i've never seen a champion nerfed more than briar uh, but here we are um, again uh, we've got health growth down uh, range up on the q and the bonus attack speed down really just placebo nerfs i guess max range here matters but i think if you're a briar main this is not going to really, really uh, change anything and if you're not a briar main there's no real reason uh, to play briar jungle right now there's no real reason to learn it it's not one of the strongest champions i'd say draven uh, guys i have played about 15 games i could tell you five of those games were against the draven and i've lost every single time draven is completely broken and uh every single time the draven has killed my bot lane uh, by level three this change seems absolutely insane it makes him so strong uh, if he's juggling two axes this five ad increase uh, is absolutely massive yeah, consider banning Draven. I'd say uh, this is one of the champions that you can actually consider banning in solo queue, regardless of what uh, what role you play. Um, Galio buffs. We've got a quick move speed buff, which is nice. Uh, it helps him avoid damage in lane, perhaps. And uh, one second of his Q. Again, Galio feels like a very situational champion right now. It feels like you can't really blind him because there's a lot of champions that can counter him or just picking things like, you know, Tristana or just a fast pushing mid where if Galio ever roams, he gets punished or, you know, just... It, it seems fine. Uh, fine is an answer to some mages or maybe some sort of um, melee AP assassins. Seems good, but situational champion. Uh, don't think it's really worth worrying about if you don't already play him. Graves, this is a massive buff, guys. Attack speed scaling, this is crazy for Graves. Uh, it's going to increase his DPS so much because he can attack faster based on his attack speed. The only question mark is, you know, what does he actually build? Because obviously, for the longest time, he was building lethality. Uh, if you build lethality, this doesn't really change anything you know it's crit and attack speed so maybe we'll see sort of the marksman graves builds come back uh the shield bow um not really sure what else but yeah i think uh we'll see a change in graves's builds and we'll just have to see how op this makes them uh Hui, this is supposed to be a double buff but they actually only ended up buffing the passive which is still you know <laughs> Hui is still uh uh, really OP. We won't have any stats from this patch, but if you just look at the previous patch on 14.7, uh, Hui's win rate was already so high um, for for an extremely high skill cap champion. You know, he already had a he had a 52% win rate in Master Plus on 14.7, and they've just buffed him, which is insane. You know, this champion deserves a nerf, not a buff. So if you don't already play Hui, this is the time to pick him up because MSI doesn't start until pretty much when patch 14.9. Uh, rolls out so riot won't actually have the data in pro play that everybody's first picking Huey, first banning Huey. Huey will be extremely contested in msi you know once they see that they will nerf him uh, but i highly doubt that will happen until 14.10 and the season ends in 28 days guys so you have you know 28 days until Huey gets nerfed and uh you can abuse him for some free lp uh, to finish as high as you want so now's the best time to learn it you know you yes you might be when you first start playing Huey, you might be like a 30 percent 40 percent winner in a way for your first 10 games but once you guys get to sort of 20 games played let's say 20 is a magic number on way you get to 20 games and you will be you know this win rate or perhaps even higher you'll be an average way player and you'll be able to get 52 53 maybe even 54 percent depending on how big this how big this nerf uh this buff actually is for the champion so uh if you're a mid laner watching this go and start playing way right now go and watch some guides uh this is the time and uh it will absolutely pay off um for you by the end of uh, the split and we've got obviously Jarvan, passive damage increase. Jarvan did need some love. I think he fell out of the meta pretty drastically. Um, I was somebody who played Lethal Tempo Jarvan. Lethal Tempo also got nerfed in the early game. So 
yeah, it's a nice change. Hopefully we see a bit more Jarvan. I think it punishes a lot of the immobile mids, you know, such as Hui. Uh, Jarvan, definitely a good pick into Hui, for example, because you can just ignore his fear, right? You just trap him in your Cataclysm. So uh, we'll see a bit more Jarvan pop up. I, I don't think this is going to make him an S-tier jungler, but uh, certainly nice. Certainly might change the combinations uh, that we see for mid-jungle. Uh, I've got a Jin buff. Jin hasn't been, hasn't been around too much in my games. So 4% extra bonus MS and a little bit of help a little bit of help in the wave clear it's hard to say yeah okay it's just 9% AD increase fair enough I mean I think Jin needed some help I think Jin really hadn't benefited I guess he benefited from the IE changes but you know for the longest time we've had champions that are building static shiv first or champions that are building kraken slayer first and um, Jin is neither um, nice change. If you're a gym player, you're probably happy with that. But again, not going to affect it too much. We got Kaisa buffs. Doesn't really affect mid lane too much. You can play AP Kaisa, but um, yeah, it's just a Kaisa buff. Nice uh, LeBlanc next. Five flat damage on the Q. At all ranks, five flat damage. I don't think this matters too much. This will help the trades, of course. It's it's like a little, you know, early game. You might get an extra 50 damage in lane. Like if you cast, how many times do you reckon you'll cast Q on the enemy? Uh, pre pre first base, pre first base. Maybe you'll cast it four, five times, six times, um, depending how late you base. Yeah, I mean it's a nice buff. It's maybe another 50 damage in lane. Um, and the W cooldown is massive. Wow, that's actually huge. Three seconds off W level one. So this will help AP LeBlanc like a lot, right? Because AD LeBlanc didn't really care about the W, but AP LeBlanc did. Um, so this will be massive. I think this will improve LeBlanc's laning phase. I don't think it's going to change some of her bad matchups, the matchups where she gets outranged um, or into champions like... You know, Lissandra Vex that just counter her throughout the game. I don't think it's going to change those ones, but in her easy matchups, definitely going to help her uh, dominate a little bit better with the W coming up a bit more often, especially against melee champions. I think against melee champs, this will matter a lot. Mordekaiser changes. Uh, we've got uh, Q cooldown going down by one. That's nice. That's a nice, I guess, quality of life change. Helps his lane. Um... E going down by 10 flat, which I suppose to offset this buff, you know, it's probably neutral, power neutral. After you consider both of these, it's probably a power, power neutral change. And then we've got the ult um, not being Q accessible anymore, which is very, very nice. That's a huge buff to Mordekaiser. Again, it's not really going to change his bad matchups into good ones, but it is going to mean that um, he has a lot more agency when joining team fights. You know, if the enemy AD carry before, if the enemy AD carry has QSS, there's nothing you could do. Uh, you can't really flash ult them, but now there's actually options. You could just join a fight and just flash ult the AD carry. Um, you can always uh, ult the support. You know, before you'd see like Swishy supports being the only target for your ult, they will just buy QSS, and uh, now you have to ult somebody who's maybe. Um, not ideal, so definitely great buffs from Wunderkaiser. Uh, doesn't really help us in mid lane, but could shake up the top meta. Buff to Olaf jungle. That's a pretty big buff by 20 damage, but that is max rank, guys. So it doesn't really, it doesn't affect his first clear. It might affect, I mean, I guess if, if you put two points in Q, it will affect your first clear, but, you know, don't really care about this Olaf change too much. Rise buffs. This is massive. This is really, really good for us. Um, this is a massive change. This 50% slow increase is so big. I can't stress how big this is. This will give you an extra auto E in pretty much every trade. If you don't use your root, if you just use the W slow, um, and actually this this like this this is even more damage because if you think about it, you know, you would use the root so that you can land all of your abilities, right? You can land all of your Qs on rise. But maybe now with the slow being fifty percent, it's just so easy to land your Qs that you should never root. Like you should just use the W for damage and to reset your Q. And uh, yeah, that this is this is a massive change. This is a huge buff for Rise early game. Um, it pretty much allows you to get an extra auto E and then potentially even uh, not have to root people to just walk with them and, and chase them. It's very, very nice. And the two seconds off a uh, Rise W. I do think Rise W a lot of the time is not the best ability to take level one. I think Rise E most cases is better because the cooldown is quite short. Um, and you can kind of walk with people. You can proc your phase rush a lot easier with starting E. You can go like E, auto E, uh, proc the phase rush, stick on people and abuse the fact that you're, you've got such low cooldowns. But, you know, certain matchups against certain melee champions, maybe you can definitely start W against certain mages as well. Uh, maybe they outrange you that you can't reliably run down with your E. So, I mean, really good rice buffs. Um, 
definitely could see Rise pop up, especially with these other changes. Rise is good into LeBlanc. Rise is good into um, Akali. And just in general, Rise is a good blind pick. There's, there's no bad lanes for Rise. Um, you can always diffuse the bad lanes by just pushing the wave because you've got such great wave clear. So even if it's a champ that outranges you or harasses you, you just shove the wave, shove the wave, shove the wave, eat some damage, recall. Shove the wave, uh, recall, roam to another lane. So uh, really big Rise changes. Huge fan of that. And we see a, a bunch of Skana changes. I'm probably going to skip the Skana changes because I, I have not played much Skana, so I can't really tell you uh, what my impressions are. But uh, my impressions last patch with a Skana was OP top lane. His W was absolutely obnoxious. They increased the W uh, mana cost and reduced the damage. So that's nice. That's really nice because this was the most broken ability he had. Um, not sure what to make of this. I will think if you, if you want to look for Skana changes, you want some advice on that. Uh, this is probably not the video. Uh, Silas Q damage. This is such a great change. Silas Jungle has been dead for so long. I've been playing Silas Jungle when it was awful, and this is a really, really nice change. Now you just max Silas Q. You always max Q on Silas Jungle. It's a great flex as well. This is a really good change for Silas mid because now you can just blind pick Silas early in the draft, and the opponent has to think twice about okay, if I pick you know Vex here to counter Silas and uh, suddenly it's Silas Jungle and now you pick like a long range mage that, that you know destroys Vex like if you pick like Orianna or you pick even like Huey or you just pick any long range champion they can bully Vex in lane uh, they can't really get feared very easily um, suddenly she's having a very bad time so uh, yeah it's a really good change for us in mid lane we've got Thresh buffs base armor up magic resist up you know Cool. Uh, we've seen a very stale, I feel like quite stale support meta. Lots of, what, Nautilus, Nautilus, Braum, Rakan, Rel, and the occasional, like, Lulu. That's been pretty much the meta, so uh, it's nice. It's nice if they add another champion. That's great. Base base HP regen for Zac down. Fair enough. It's a pretty strong top laner, so this affects his, his laning. And uh, base HP down for Zeri. Again, fair enough. I think Zeri should be a little bit weaker early game. Uh, because of how how well she scales so and then we've got the void grubs changes which are really really big for mid lane as well because this means that you know you could actually greed your recall now before it felt like if you don't take like that you know five minute recall if, or if you don't have tp um you just giving away free grubs right if you take a bad base around sort of the four to five minute marks you're giving away free drug uh, free grubs but now uh, you can pretty much always um show up to grubs with four resources if it's six minutes and uh, yeah, just it just changes, I guess, the way that you think about your recalls and when you actually want to reset, sync it up with your jungle, contest the grub. So we'll have to see how these changes feel. Uh, I've played a bit of jungle on this patch. It feels like full clearing is way better than the um, you know the grubs path. So again, we'll just have to see. Hui, absolutely godlike, does not get countered. Even his counters are just champions that can ignore his fear and kill him. But the thing is, Hui's base damage values are so high that if you pick something like an Echo or a Fizz or uh, things of that nature, like it's sort of a, I call it a one mistake lane on Hui. If you don't make any mistakes, it is impossible for Echo or Fizz or any of those assassins to actually beat you. If you don't make any mistakes, it is automatically winning for you because um, they can never kill you with equal items. If you just press WW on yourself and you full combo them, you will actually out damage every assassin in the game on Hui, and uh, you can pretty much safely safely CS with just max range QE um, as soon as you get your first base in. So uh, just the really safest, safest blind pick in the game. Um, also incredibly strong counter pick into certain melee matchups, into certain short range mages, like we said, the Vex, you know, against the Vex, Lissandra. Um, you will be very, very comfortable. Um, we saw LeBlanc getting buffed. I think LeBlanc is a pretty good champion. She already was, uh, but it's definitely not it's definitely not a not a blindable champ because there's a lot of things that can they can counter you. So I think LeBlanc is kind of here. And when you play LeBlanc, it really just depends on your jungler because you could play bad matchups on LeBlanc uh, if you have a good ganky jungler and just play for the kill, right? You don't have to uh, try and problem solve it. One v one, Lissandra probably put in B tier, viable champion as a counter pick, but again, very bad blind against long long range mages. Uh, what else got buffed? It was Akali, right? So Akali got buffed. I think Akali, the Akali buffs didn't really do too much, in my opinion. Uh, Akali definitely comes in and out of the meta depending on the other champions. Like, you know, if it's an AD carry meta, like if it's if, if they pick Ash AD carry, then you just can lock in Akali, and it doesn't matter what your mid matchup is because in every team fight, the Ash will just die to you, things like that. So uh, I think Akali. 
Cal is fine here. Obviously, we see a lot of TF top. That's a great, you know, if, if TF top is in the meta, that decentivizes a Kali. Um, but I think it's fine. I think the Kali is A tier. Good counter pick, uh, you know, can blind, uh, depending on the jungle matchup. Pretty strong champion overall. Um, Ari, S tier pick, blindable to everything, has not been nerfed. For some reason, Ari is just like OP for six months at a time before they nerf her. Um, the reason why Ari is OP is because Malignance is OP. Uh, she's probably the best user of Malignance. It means her ult is like 30 seconds by you know, the time she gets to level 11, which is just insane. Uh, she can use her ult to get a pick at an objective, start the objective, and then by the time you finish the objective, Ari has ult again, and she gets another pick. You know, it's just insane. This champion is just broken. She does have some bad matchups, obviously, some good counters. Um, um, like, obviously, you can play, like, Kassadin into Ari, where you just ignore her and you outscale. You can play, you know, Silas is good, because you can take Ari ults. Um, there's a lot of just neutral lanes, like, you know, Talia is just a neutral lane, Ori, Syndra, all these... A lot of champions don't mind playing against Ari, but the thing is, Ari can just make a lot happen very quickly um she has a lot more agency with uh, you know having three three dashes and a stun uh annie i think annie's probably b tier it's a good again um she doesn't feel as oppressive in lane before when annie was really good it felt like you just take first strike and you would just ult someone and you print some money and you know she survives at lane against everyone but now it just feels like okay why pick annie when you could pick ari you know it's it, it has more mobility than annie it has the same stun um it's 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 better into the worst matchups, and yeah, I just think Annie's Annie's a fine champ, but it's not really a uh, a champion that you would blind pick, and it's also most of the time not the hardest counter. Um, if you're if you're kind of picking like a red five R five counter pick for mid, Asol completely broken champion, disgusting. Uh, every single game I played against Asol, this champion either goes zero 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 and lane, or like dies twice to ganks and then just carries the game anyway. This we saw this in the LCK finals. Chovy played this fantastically, and we saw the power of it. It's just such a strong champion. If you're thinking about a champion to learn, it's got to be one of these three for sure. One of these three, um, if you want to climb. Um, by the time uh, split one ends, this is this is your best bet. Uh, let's go next. We got Akshan. So I think Akshan is probably uh, for solo queue. I'd probably put him in A tier. He's a very very strong champion because he has uh, multiple builds right now. Akshan is very very flexible. Uh, he can do the uh, obviously Kraken Bork. Uh, Gwinsu Terminus build like Varus, and that works fantastically. He can also do crit. You can also absolutely do crit action if you have, you know, two or even three AP champions. You could just go full crit. So you could just go like Kraken Collector, IE, um, you know, Shield Bow, or you can skip Collector or Lord Doms, whatever it is. So you, just, you can go full crit. Works. You can go. Um, you can go Lethality, but I don't think Lethality is as good. Um, but yeah, the. It, Akshan's just a good champ, uh, for sure a good champ, very strong into melees, counters a lot of melees, uh, the revive mechanic is OP in solo EQ, he's, he's always just been like a top tier solo EQ pick, but the problem is again, if you blind Akshan and they pick a long range bully mage, like a Hui, it's going to be hard to, to play lane. You know, so, or for example, if they pick A Soul, you know, this is probably why Akshan can't be higher because, like, A Soul is quite good into Akshan because he just ignores him, doesn't let him push the wave into the tower, and then eventually, uh, you know, Akshan has no CC to interrupt A Soul Q, and A Soul will just out damage him. And uh, Hui is just a bully in lane. Hui can also interrupt Akshan E really easily with his E. Um, so there's just a couple bad lanes for Akshan, but definitely, you know, into Akali, Akshan's a great pick. You can um, reveal her stealth, you know. Into LeBlanc is good, into Annie is fine, Lissandra is fine. I don't know, just a good champ. Uh, can can be viable. Fizz, I think Fizz is probably B tier. The problem with Fizz is his laning phase is just too weak against, um, you know, against a good player. They will be able to punish punish Fizz and uh, make him, you know, go down 10, 20, 30 CS. And then even though, yes, the champion's good, uh, if you just have less the gold than the other guy, then you can't kill anyone. So Fizz is a Soliki champ. If you're a Fizz one trick, you can absolutely run away with Soliki games on it. But uh, it's not a pick that you should really consider learning for 14.8. Next, we have Azir. Um, Azir's a pretty strong champion, but I'd probably put him into B tier just because... Uh, he did get nerfed a little bit. Um, he's a good blind pick for sure, but Azir can get punished in certain bad lanes. Like, good luck playing Azir into Hui. That, that matchup is completely unplayable. You will literally not be able to farm. And then if you're playing, you know, Azir into Ari, she can roam, she can just ignore you. So, I don't know. It feels like Azir doesn't really punish any champions. The problem with Azir is he, he does not punish any champions, and he also can be punished in certain bad matchups or with certain jungle pairings like LeBlanc Vi. You know, playing Azir into LeBlanc Vi is really... Uh, it's very dangerous. Um, so... Yeah, I think Azir 
certainly viable, but um, he's definitely been pushed back a peg. Anivia, Anivia is actually a sleeper OP champ. I think uh, all of Anivia, uh, Anivia's items are OP. You know, Leandries is a very good item. Seraphs is a very good item. Rod is fine. Um, Crypto Bloom is great for her. So I think Anivia is actually a really, really strong champ. But I think it takes a lot of games, a lot of mastery uh, to become good at Anivia. So um, again, I would probably put her in B tier just because if you're thinking about what champion what new champion to pick up or to main this patch or next patch to actually climb. Anivia is not an easy champion to pick up, um, but she's certainly very good in certain matchups, um, especially against, for example, Ryze. Like, Anivia Ryze is a really good matchup, so uh, if Ryze comes back into meta with the buffs, we could see more Anivia. Um, we got Cassio. Cassio is, again... Cassio is S tier, and her Cassio is probably like has a separate tier. She has like S plus tier against melee mids. Like Cassio against melee mids is just, mwah, it's it's fantastic. Chef's kiss, you you can't lose that. You outscale, team fights are easy. You can side lane. It's just OP champ against any melee. But then you have like Cassio against Syndra, and suddenly she goes down to B tier because. You know, you can survive in that lane, but you will lose prior. Um, you know, you'll constantly get chunked against champions that outrange you and they can kite you. So I'd probably put it in A tier. It's a great counter pick. It can work blind because you can still play team fights, things like that. But uh, it's something that you should consider sort of picking on red side once you see what the enemy champs have drafted. Um, Aurelia mid. I mean, Aurelia, I think, is probably B tier because, again, a lot of these champions like, you know, Asol. Like, you can't really punish Aesol with Aurelia. Huey, just uh, easy away. Same thing with Ari. You can't really go on Ari. So Aurelia is kind of B tier. She's, again, she's very, very good if you're proficient at her. Uh, but right now, against the meta champions, she can't really punish them. And, uh, yeah, they get to do whatever they want. Corky, I'll put Corky in B tier as well. You know, we see some Corky in competitive. Uh, the Corky changes were, I think, overall positive for Corky. Obviously, the Malignant's nerfed sucks, um, but the actual you know cooldown changes on the package was actually pretty good. Uh, but again, it just doesn't feel like Corky has great items to build right now. You still have to go Malignant's, even though it's been nerfed for Corky. Uh, there's no better builds, and uh, he takes a little bit too long to come online, I think, for Soloki to have a real good impact. Uh, but it's definitely something you can consider picking into you know the favorable matchups if you're playing against something like Aesol or Azir or even Ari, like champs that aren't too impressive, too oppressive in lane. If you can get through laning phase and uh, get to your items, then Corky is definitely good. Malzahar, I think Malzahar is probably C tier. I think Malzahar right now is quite weak. Again, uh, he's so weak that they're considering removing uh, QSS interaction for result because they want to give him some love, which makes sense. And when that comes around, we can move him up if that happens. Heimerding, I think Heimerding is, again, pretty weak, just because um, a lot of the champions now, again, just outrange him, or they can kill him, they can dive him, you know, like Akali into Heimerding, you get to six, good luck playing Heimerdinger. LeBlanc into Heimerdinger, your jungler comes, just kills him. Um, into lanes like Cassio, maybe it's pretty decent. Akshan, pretty decent. Against some of these champs, it's okay. Uh, but I think, in general, Heimerding is just... Not a very good uh, mid laner right now. Diana, I think Diana's pretty strong. We've got that guy on the Korean super server who reached a very, very high rank. So, but it's but it's definitely you know it has some bad matchups against the the anti melee champs. So even against something like Yon, uh, Yasuo against lethal tempo champs. So I think Diana against lethal tempo champs is really hard to play. I think Diana against mages is great to play um, as a counter pick to like a Syndra or you know Oriana, you know Lux, whatever else like the mages. You can definitely pick Diana too, but against uh, AD melee champs, I wouldn't pick it. Against AP melee champs, you can. So yeah, I mean it has its it has its place, it has uh, its uses, but it shouldn't be a champ that you're learning from scratch because you want to climb. Um, Galio did just get buffed. Now Galio is a hard one to put. I do think Galio is actually quite a strong champion. Um, but again, I think he just has too many bad matchups right now. There's too many, too many things that either put Galio on a timer or can completely dominate Galio in the lane or can just ignore Galio and kill its team. So yeah, I'd probably put Galio in B tier. It's certainly viable uh, in the right matchup, but not a, not a, not a champion would blind or really prioritize learning. Lux, again, I'd probably put a B tier just because a Lux can get prior into a lot of these champions. Lux, Lux can outrange or get prior into a lot of these champions. She's very safe. So I think Lux is a good neutralizer pick. You know, if you don't know what to pick, um, you don't show about the matchup, you can just pick Lux, spam your E, you know, survive lane, have prior, and then once you get your ult, you just ult every second wave and, you know, you get your items, you play for team fights, you play for picks around mid. 
it's a good champ, certainly viable. Uh, if you enjoy playing Lux. Jace, again, I'd probably put him here. It feels like Jace items have been nerfed. A lot of the Jace items, you know, Yomu is for ranged. Um, a lot of the Lethality items. Serrated Dirk nerf was huge for Jace because that was his big power spike, right? Buying Serrated Dirk and doing those QEs in lane to just chunk you out, especially against mages with no kind of regen or shielding. Uh, so I think Jace has just been affected by too many nerfs to be uh, higher than this. There's just better AD options. You know, it feels like if you want an AD mid, go with Yone, go with Tristana. Um... You know, go with TF even. That's been the flavor of the month, right? So uh, it just doesn't feel like uh, Jace is the go-to answer for AD mids at the moment. Of course, if you're the best player, um, you know, the best Jace player in the world, like we have a really good uh, uh, Jace player. Our rank one player on OC is really, really good at Jace. Against him, people would still ban Jace just because you have that mastery of the champion. So if you have mastery of Jace, you can absolutely still pick him. If you don't, don't bother. Uh, Karma. Karma used to be OP for a while mid. I feel like it's not anymore. Her Q spam is a lot less oppressive, uh, but it's certainly certainly good champion. Um, if we see something like this Graves, this Graves buff be really big, uh, then potentially we could see Karma come back in because Karma Graves is a very, very good pairing. Helps Graves invade, has pro, a perma prio, uh, is a very low resource champion. Uh, so we'll just have to see how the jungle meta goes uh, to determine whether Karma will go up or down on this list. Kassadin. Kassadin's probably an A-tier champ. I think Kassadin has been really strong for a while as a counter pick. Uh, you know, it's an A-tier champ as a counter pick. If you play Kassadin in a bad lane, like if you play Kassadin to Tristana or Kassadin into like, you know, maybe Yone, Yasuo, good luck. Good luck playing him. He'd probably be here. But again, Kassadin into like, Kassadin into Aesol, Kassadin into Ari, Kassadin into Hui. If you, can, if you can basically play him into any of these S-tier picks, you're very, very happy. And chances are, most games, you will see one of these three champions in mid. Or in a lot of games right now, you will see one of these three champs. So Kassadin, I think, is really, really strong right now. You could even put him here. Um, just depends. Yeah, I mean, he's great against LeBlanc. He's great against um, Akali as well. He's very, very good, I think, against a lot of the strong champions mid right now. So uh, consider learning Kassadin if you don't know him already. He's very, very easy to play. Um, and if you see that it's a good Kassadin game, as in they have very little CC, and uh, you're playing as an AP mid or maybe even double AP mid jungle or mid top, uh, you just lock in Kassadin, you, you hit your you know, Malignants, Archangels, you just run away with the game. So next we have Swain. Um, Swain is definitely a B-tier champ, solid into certain melees, really good into a lot of melees mid actually, um, you know, into something like a Fizz or um, Diana, like, uh, he's just great, he can build defensive items, he can build like Abyssal Mask, Merc Treads, Rod of Ages, Leandry, just spam HP, right, and uh, be super tanky, frontline, um, but right now Silas jungle is coming back, right? Silas mid is quite strong and that's like the go-to counter for Swain, right? You pick Silas and you just become a better Swain. Um, you know, a lot of these champions are pretty happy playing to Swain on Cassidy and Cassio, even Akshan, LeBlanc. I think all of these champions don't really mind playing at Swain and then, you know, Hui will dominate him, Ari will go even, but outroam him, Aesol will outscale him. It just feels like Swain just, it, it's only an answer into certain champs. You can't really blind him in this meta. Katarina, I think Katarina is actually, just depends on your skill. I think Katarina is pretty strong, to be honest. It's quite good into Hui. Katarina is quite good into Hui if you can play, you know, if you can if you can get a couple kills somewhere around the map, you could definitely just kill these champions like Hui, Aesol, you know, Ari. She can, she can definitely run away. Uh, with the game, but I think she can also lose laning really hard and then not come back into it. So we'll probably put Katarina on B. I think Katarina is certainly viable, but um, again, just requires too many hours to be good at it. So uh, not something that the average player should consider learning. The Fury, I think the Fury is C tier. This champion is just so dog shit right now. It's unbelievable. It can't lane into anything. It loses all ends to every melee assassin in the game. And I don't know. And then the Fury used to be good for a while, but right now it feels... Super underwhelming. I can't remember the last time I've seen this champion win or do anything in any game. Now, Nico is a solid champion. Um, it's always been in the meta kind of as a backup mid laner. He always gets prize, strong in lane, a bully. The problem right now is uh, Nico's items have all been nerfed. Protobell's been nerfed. Stomp Surge has been nerfed. So it feels like she doesn't really have any good good choices to go for. You know, Shadow Flame, sure. Death Gap, sure. But what do you actually build first item that... You know, can contest like uh, a Huey with Archangels with Seraphs. You know, I think that like the problem for Nico is she's a very committed 
to diving and seraphs is such a strong item right now that a lot of these mages as soon as they upgrade their seraphs like talia like uh, hui once they get their seraphs you can never really kill them or obviously hp stackers like asol or you know dash champs like uh, ari so i think probably put her into b tier she's viable she's a great counter pick into certain melee champions or certain short range mages but um there's just better options if you're gonna uh think of a new mid to learn Ori is still a good champ. I don't know if I put Ori into A tier or B tier. It feels like uh, there's just mages that do what Ori does slightly better. But I'll probably put Ori into A tier just because she is a good blind pick. She's a solid blind pick. Um, another good champion that uses Seraphs, right? She's got the double shield. So I think Ori is just a solid champ. But the problem with, again, blind picking Ori is if you play against Asol, you know, this champ will outscale you. You play against way this champ will also kind of outscale you because he just does more damage and you can't really dominate um, them in lane enough um, to justify the ori pick you just rather play one of these two champs and then obviously cassadin to ori is great for cassadin akali is happy to play against ori uh, it's kind of an even matchup yeah ori is just a fine blind i think it's just probably the probably one of the only blinds here in this list i think ori is probably the best a tier blind and we'll probably that, that's i think that's how we'll we'll um We'll rate these picks. We'll put them blindable left to right, like uh, whether you can blind the champ or not. What else do we have? We've got Kiana. Kiana. It feels like Kiana's just had too many nerfs. I have not seen a good Kiana mid in ages. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just, uh, you know, our server doesn't have any really skilled Kiana players. But I just can't imagine picking Kiana right now. You know, especially there's so many things that reveal stealth. Look, LeBlanc Chain reveals stealth. Akshan ult reveals stealth. Asol just kills you in stealth. You know, Ari has charm. Hue can just, again, kill you in stealth. Like, there's just too many champs. Cassiopeia is unplayable for Kiana. You know, Ori can just ignore you and get prior. It just feels like all of these champions are good into Kiana. So, normally I'd put Kiana in B tier. But because of all the bad matchups, I reckon she might be in C. Smolder, C tier. This champ has been nerfed into the ground. It is absolute garbage. Rise. Rise has been buffed. Rise is really great. I would put Rise A, but potentially you could, like, Rise could actually be S tier as well. Um, just because it is very neutral into both of these lanes. You can survive, um, you can survive Hue. Uh, it's one of those champions that, one of the best champions, I think, at surviving against Hue because uh, he can push the wave faster than Hue. Um, if Hui doesn't spam his abilities, and your abilities are much lower mana cost. Like, Hui abilities are like 90, 90, you know, 100, like, but Ryze's spells are like 38, 40, you know, 35. So, uh, it's a really, I think it could be a really good diffuser um, answer into Hui. The problem is, you do get outranged in fights. Um, Ryze doesn't want to play against long range champions. Hui is a long range champion, but you do have your ult to close the distance. So, uh, for me, for my personal tier list, Ryze will be here, but I think for the average player, if you're not. Uh, an insanely, um, if you don't have insane mastery on the champion, you probably just put him in A tier uh, alongside Ori as like a safe, a blind mid that has great pairings as well. You know, with Graves, like if you're thinking, okay, I want to play Graves jungle, you'd rather have a Rise with guaranteed CC. You'd rather have a LeBlanc with guaranteed CC um, as opposed to an Ori. So I think, yeah, these three champs are pretty, pretty solid blinds with the right jungle pairing. Um, Syndra again, Syndra's fine. Like. Uh, He's just a, a decent blind pick mid, works well, has set up for carry junglers, works with, uh, you know, dog junglers like Vi and Jarvan. Just, just a good champion, good blind champion, nothing too strong about it, nothing too weak about it, builds Seraphs. I think any any mid they can rush Seraphs is, is always going to be viable just because the item is so good. Um, Silas, Silas is really, really strong. Um, potentially Silas becomes S tier because of the flex, because you can early pick Silas and if they counter it, you know, Silas goes jungle and uh, you just pick like a, you know, a counter pick mid for whatever that, that lane is. So I'll probably put Silas here though. I'll probably put Silas in A tier just because currently the Silas build uh, has no sustain and no mana, right? You just go Lich Bane into Shadow Flame, uh, into Death Cap or Lich Bane into Zonya's into Death Cap. And so it feels like uh, currently, Shadow uh, Silas can get bullied in lane. Like if Silas has a bad laning phase, it's hard to come back into it. Um, but obviously, if he has a good lane, he picks up a couple kills. He's very good at skirmishes. There's a lot of great ults. I mean, these are really good ults for Silas. All three of these ults are absolutely godlike for Silas. So Silas could actually be S tier. Um, and the the buff to the the minion modifier on his Q also 
helps with side laning later on, right? Like now when you side lane, you can actually just take the Krugs. You can actually just take the Raptors, the Wolves. Like you could take all the jungle camps solo without losing too much health because your Q does so much damage. So um, honestly, I might put Silas and uh, Silas up here because all of these matchups are also pretty, obviously not the cast in a matchup, but yeah, I might actually put Silas and ST. I think Silas is a really, really strong mid laner right now. Um, strong flex pick. He probably deserves to be an S tier because he has all of, all these matchups are great for him. Uh, Talia, Talia, we'll put it on an A tier. Great champion. Um, again, Talia doesn't want to play against certain champs like Huey. I think Huey Talia is really, really free for Huey because he outranges her. Um, but yeah, it's just a safe. It's a safe blind pick mid. It gets prior. It's good with uh, you know a lot of the junglers like Vi. You know, it's fine with Lee Sin. Just it's just a good champ. Uh, great into uh, lots of dashes, but it's not really a champ that you pick on one, like or one two or whatever. You just you kind of wait to see some dashes, and then you're like, cool, I'll slam Talia this value out of this champion. Um, definitely an easy champ to pick up. So if you're thinking of something to learn, I think Talia is definitely up here in terms of the safe blinds. Um, Talon, I think Talon probably in B tier. Although if you're a very skilled Talon for sure in C tier, I think uh, in A tier. Excuse me, I think. I'm not sure what the Talon build is right now. Let's have a look. Talon. Okay. I think Talon's a pretty good champion. But I think that he doesn't really abuse any of the OP items. I do think that the the most OP AD item right now is Eclipse. And it is actually the highest win rate on Talon. So maybe people haven't really caught on to it just yet. But yeah, I think if your champion is an assassin, needs to build Eclipse to be, uh, to be up here. And if it doesn't build Eclipse, then... Uh, I'm just going to put it. So I think I think Talon deserves to be in B tier. Tristana, I think this is an A tier champion. Um, the problem with Tristana right now, maybe Tristana will be S tier as well in this patch because Tristana Silas is an insane combo. Tristana Silas is one of the best mid pairings ever because both champions want chaos. Both champions have dashes. Both champions, you know, want to want to play really aggressive in the early game. Uh, trade. Uh, there's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of uh, opportunities. So Tristana could actually be um, kind of in S tier, depending on whether people start playing Diana as well. Diana buffs were huge. I feel like Diana's a very, very strong champ right now, very strong jungler, especially for solo queue. Clears so fast. It also one taps the Void Grubs. The Diana passive just destroys Void Grubs. It can solo Dragon. So um, I think depending on the jungle meta, if we'll see the jungle meta shift at all towards AP, um, AP heavy junglers, we'll definitely see Tristana as the best AD mid by far. Uh, Twist of Fate. Okay, well, TF, the problem with TF is ADTF got nerfed a bit too hard, I feel like. I feel like ADTF, it's still good uh, for the same reasons it was, but it's hard to play lane into a lot of these bullies. Like, it's actually hard to play lane into, like, um, you know, Huey, Ori, um, even Syndra can be a little bit difficult. So it feels like on TF right now, in order to play lane, you really have to trade a lot of autos and you expose yourself to ganks. So it's very hard to... If you either do nothing and then you lose prior and then you don't get ganked and you go down a bit of CS, or you play very confidently, very aggressive, and then you you just die to a gank. So I think TF is more of a TF ADTF is more of a top champion right now. It's not as good mid, um, but APTF is certainly good. And if we see champions like you know Akali come back into the meta, um, obviously it's great into Ari as well. A great lane for TF. Asol, totally fine for TF as well. You know, he gets to get his items. Huey is okay. Like, I think if you're going APTF, it's totally fine. So I think I'll put TF here. Um, this is probably APTF is A tier. And I'd say ADTF is probably B tier right now. But both are totally viable. And that's a good thing about TF, right? You can actually pick TF early. Um, and it doesn't lock your jungler into a certain damage type. Like, for example, if I pick, um, you know, if I pick LeBlanc early, then I'm not going to pick an AP jungler with LeBlanc. You know, because they'll just buy Merc Treads and my champ will be useless and my jungle will be useless. And um, So yeah, I think APTF is up here. ADTF is probably here. Uh, Vega, I think Vega is actually quite a strong champion. And Vega might actually be in A tier against certain matchups. Like Vega into Ari has always been a very good matchup where you outscale her. Uh, she can't dash out of your cage. Um, Vega into Rise has always been a pretty good matchup for the same reasons. You just outrange Rise, you scale just as well. You know, Vega into LeBlanc is pretty free as well for the same reason. She can't dash out. So um, we could see more Vega um, pop up. But at the same time, there's also other champions that are very, very good into Vega um, that are very happy playing into him. So I think Vega is just a B tier champ, viable, but you got to be careful when you select him. Velkoz, I think Velkoz is a C tier champ, maybe B, something, one of these two. I think Velkoz has some decent items. Um, you can definitely build the meta items, but the problem is 
again, against assassins, you just can't play the game. So if you pick Velkos early, you struggle. If you pick Velkos to counter something like Azir, great. You know, if you pick Velkos to counter something like Lissandra, great. So against short range mages, fantastic pick. So we'll, we'll leave him in B tier. Uh, very viable counter pick for sure. Vex, I think Vex again, Vex is a counter pick to melees, S tier. Vex against. Some of these ranged matchups is C tier. It's just not playable. So it's hard to say where you should put Vex. Um, I think it's probably going to be here because, uh, you know, it's good against Silas, but against it's good against Ari as well, actually. It is good against Silas and Ari, Vex. Hmm. It's good against Tristana. Pretty bad against these champs. Good against LeBlanc. It's actually hard. Uh, Vex is probably on the edge here. Vex is like high B or, or very low low A, uh, just because of how volatile it is. You know, it's it's either extremely good in the good matchups or extremely bad in the bad matchups. So I'd probably put Vex on B tier. Vex is like Vex is like the best champion here to counter with, um, but it's also just as bad at getting countered as you know some of these other um, short range mages. Very, very hard to play certain matchups. So I'd probably put it in B tier. Decent, decent um, answer uh, to certain lanes. But also, yeah, I, I think I think if Vex had a good item to build first, she would be A tier. But because she can only build Ludens, you know, you can go Malignants, but I don't think it's that great uh, because the Q breakpoint on the wave doesn't really help you one-shot the wave um, until uh, one level later than when you do with Ludens. So I think if Vex could build Seraph, she would be A tier, but she can't, so she's uh, B tier. Uh, Victor, I don't know. Victor is just, he's viable. I have not seen a single Victor in my games, like ever. I have actually not seen Victor. I don't actually think Victor belongs in C tier, but let's actually look up Victor win rates. I'm not I'm not too sure. What was his win rate in? Uh, I'm not sure why people have just forgotten about Victor. He's always been a decent champ. Seems like Seraphs could, could be a, a good buy on him as well, right? But for whatever reason, people have just decided that Victor sucks. He has, a, he has a decent win rate. Um, what are people building? I think it's maybe because people, to me, people are building Ludens, right? Seems like a decent champion because Lich Band is a strong champ, uh, strong, strong item. Uh, Seraphs is a strong item. I'm not really sure why people don't don't play Victor. I think they'll probably do a small buff to Victor eventually, and then people will stop playing him and realize, oh, okay, this champ is actually pretty decent. So I think Victor's actually a good champ. I think it's a good champ. I think it's in B tier. It's it's like a blindable mid. Uh, there's just no reason to pick him over other mages because there are other champions that also build Seraphs and are just stronger. Like they can bully harder, um, or they scale better, right? Or they uh, they're more mobile. They offer you uh, better roaming or things like that. So I think Victor is just He's just the he's just the mage. Like you can pick him if if you've got five bands. Uh, if there's five mid bands from each team, then you just pick Victor, and you're pretty happy with that. Uh, Vladimir, I think Vladimir is CT. Vladimir is just not a good mid lane champ at the moment. I mean, you can maybe argue that Vlad's B tier, but I feel like Vlad has way too many bad matchups right now mid, um, and certainly champions are just outscale him into like Vlad is supposed to be the best scaling champ right because he has no CC he has no agency early game he just scales but there's just better champions than him there's better champions that clear the way faster give you prior faster have better roaming tools um yeah I think Vlad is just not not a great pick mid at the moment Zillion I think Zillion's BT Zillion's always viable against like a full dive comp it makes him very very good um but against you know a non-dive comp against a poke comp or pick comp or Team fight comp, good luck. Uh, maybe even split push comp, good luck playing Zillion. So put him in B tier, viable, good flex as well. Uh, Zerath, I'm not really sure why more people play Zerath. I guess it's again because Zerath is a champion that likes to build Ludens, and uh, Ludens is just not a very strong AP item right now. I think the active on Ludens is just too weak. Like the little uh, explosions, they just need to buff him a little bit, give him a bit more AP ratio, because right now it feels quite underwhelming playing Ludens. So I'll probably put Xerath and BT again. Xerath is a good answer to certain short-range mages like Azir. Uh, but if you pick it into an assassin, you just FF15. Zed, I think Zed is actually quite a strong champ. Um, Zed is one of those few champions who actually abuses Eclipse really well. So Zed, I think, in a good matchup can easily be A tier. Zed in a good matchup is absolutely A tier. But then again, if you're playing Zed against a champion that you can't actually kill... Um, you know, he could be C tier because obviously you just get outscaled and I mean, he does his thing late game. Like Zed is, Zed is not bad. I put I put Zed in B tier. I think it can be viable but has some bad matchups. Yasuo, 
Yasuo honestly is an A tier champion right now. I feel like I feel like Yasuo after the um, after the Kraken buffs and the I mean the the, the IE buffs, Kraken IE Yasuo is just so strong, just one shots people. Um, it's very very good into Hui. Uh, it's very good into Ari. It's very good into Silas. I think it's fine into Asol as well. Um, so I think and especially with Diana Jungle being buffed and being pretty strong, and I think that we'll see a lot more Diana Jungle in the MSI. Um, play in stage and yeah, I think Yasuo uh, belongs belongs here in AT. You wouldn't want to blind Yasuo probably because again, there's some pretty good answers to Yasuo on this list. Um, some reasonable champions, but at the same time, yeah, he has a lot of good matchups, a lot of good matchups right now in the meta. So uh, we'll put him up there. Um, Yearn again, AT champ benefited from the you know the IE changes. Kraken IE on Yearn right now is, is very very strong. You get those two items. IE is cheaper, and you just start one tapping people. So Yearn is a really really strong pick, no doubt about it. Strong blind as well. Um, I think unlike Yasuo, Yearn could survive a lot more lanes just because he has two ways to CS his Q and his W, and technically his E as well. Whereas Yasuo just kind of has his Q. And then I guess his wind wall, but his wind wall is such a long cooldown that you can't really reliably use that to protect yourself. So Yoen could survive the bad lanes a lot easier and doesn't require as much setup as Yasuo, uh, but they're both strong in their own ways. Ziggs, I'd probably put Ziggs in B tier. Definitely a viable champ, has good wave clear, a great Seraphs user, um, certainly not forced to go Ludens, can build Seraphs. And, um, Zoe, uh, I guess Zoe is probably B tier as well. I feel like Zoe, again, gets outranged by a lot of the champions in the meta. Um, at least in lane, she struggles in lane because Zoe's a champion that wants to run Ignite, right? She wants to run Ignite, she wants to win lane. Right now, you can't do that against a lot of the meta champs. Um, so she's sort of like, you know, if you can't dominate lane on, Zo on Zoe, why would you play Zoe when you can play Hui? And you, you're still the same long range mage, except you have instant wave clear, you know, you have more damage, uh, more AoE damage for team fights, the same ability to pick people. It just feels a little bit underwhelming right now, Zoe. I think this. Champ might need some buffs uh, to sort of break through into this tier. Um, that's about it. I think that's a good tier list for mid lane um, on patch 14.8. I think if you're considering playing a new champion, you should choose Asol, Hui, Ari, uh, potentially Silas. I think Silas is a really great champion to learn because as soon as you learn Silas mid, you can suddenly offer all Silas jungle whenever you want, right? When you play Silas jungle, it's really pretty straightforward. So for patch 14.8, if you really want to climb, the best champions are by far Ace or Hui. You know, you want to learn something to gain LP uh, that will not get nerfed in 14.9, that will definitely get nerfed in 14.10. It is Hui, Ace or. Pick up these champions and you will reach your desired rank. Um, alternatively, you could also consider learning, you know, Tristana, probably the best AD blind on the patch. Very, very safe. Uh, doesn't have counters. Um, Rise could be a good option as well. Um, if you enjoy sort of the, the macro of the alt, Rise to Leah are your best options for if you're a roaming player, if you enjoy roaming, like if you're an assassin player, but you feel like assassins aren't that great, this is probably, you know, a good option because uh, it really doesn't take too much time to pick up. You can just, you know, you just push the wave and you go roam. Push the wave and you go skirmish on these two chaps. These are a lot of fun to play in solo queue. Otherwise, LeBlanc could also be viable, but I do think LeBlanc takes a while to pick up, but... Um, can be a lot of fun to learn this patch. And uh, yeah, Kassadin. Kassadin's a really, really big pick. If you can spend 5, 10 games learning Kassadin, you know, you'll have a 70% win rate in a lot of these matchups. If it's a good Kassadin game, it's just so easy to execute. That's it for the patch 14.8 rundown. If you enjoyed that, please do subscribe. And I have a link in the description to my coaching Discord. If you guys have any questions about uh, matchups or item builds or things like that, just pop in. Uh, there's separate channels for each champion. Um, there's a lot of discussions there already. Maybe your question's already been asked, uh, but there's definitely a lot of value to gain uh, by just uh, coming by and having a look. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.